Okay, hello everybody. Um, so uh, I toyed with the idea of throwing together an article of all the new stuff that's been implemented in Recon NG, but I realized that article would be very long. Um, it would take you a long time to read it, and it would take me a, about 10 times longer to write it. So um, I decided rather than do that, I'm just going to do a quick recording, a screencast of kind of uh, the changes that have taken place and so on and so forth. and uh, just to kind of give everybody an idea of, of what's new and kind of how to use it um, um, based on the changes that have been made. So uh, first and foremost, uh, this video assumes that you've used Recon NG up to the, the most recent stable before version 5, which was version 4.9.6. So I'm not going to cover a bunch of the stuff that's been there for a very long time or that was there since the beginning. I'm literally going to pick up where version 5 uh, changes begin. Uh, so first that and second of all, um, you know, this video is ideally for folks that have either written about Recon NG or have Recon NG in a training course. I want those folks to be able to update their content um, to be able to um, properly, you know, train their people on how to use the modern version and not continue to train them on using the old stuff. So I would encourage those folks, if you fall into that category, please reach out to me with any questions you have based on this video or things I don't cover, so so on and so forth, uh, so that I can help you get your content updated and you can continue to give people the correct information on on the modern, most recent versions as opposed to the old ones. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and jump into it. First thing, uh, we are now on GitHub. Um, so Recon NG is now over on GitHub. It used to be hosted on Bitbucket, uh, but now we're on GitHub. And, and basically, you know, the reason why I always had it on Bitbucket before was because they allowed free private repositories. And that was kind of an attractive feature. But now, since GitHub has implemented free private repositories, I moved it over there. Um, and so, kind of, well, if they're both free, why didn't I just keep it where I had it? Because I enjoy GitHub's interface better. I like some of their uh, diagnostic and, an and analytical tools better. Um, and I have a lot of my other open source projects over there too. Um, so just overall, I'm a bigger fan of GitHub than I am Atlassian. I'm a bigger fan of Microsoft than I am Atlassian as well. And uh, those are the separate companies that own these two service providers. So we're over on GitHub now. This is the uh, this is the front page for it. As you can see, it's got the README there, all that good stuff. And that's about all I'm going to show you inside of a web interface. We're going to spend the rest of the time looking at the terminal. Okay, so now before we even start uh, the framework, there's a couple of things that I want to show you. Um, we'll just do a quick help here. Um, some new runtime features here. Oh, uh, another thing you may have noticed over here in my virtual environment here. Uh, we've also upgraded to Python 3. Uh, with uh, the Python 2 being deprecated here in the next year, uh, six months to a year, we've gone ahead and, and upgraded everything to Python 3, which was probably one of the larger tasks because that, that, that didn't just mean converting over all of the code that makes up the framework itself, but also all of the code that makes up every single module. And I believe there was over 95 of them when we started this conversion process. So a lot of code needed to be converted over, but it has. And so now we're on Python 3 as well. So here's some of the runtime options for Recon NG. Uh, some of this stuff has not changed. You still have the ability to run resource files, pre-select a workspace, so on and so forth. I mean, if you didn't know, some of these were already here. Um, some things that um, Recon NG does when you first load the framework is it will check for the version to see if you need an upgrade and then it will prompt you to upgrade it if you do. Um, you can disable that just by clicking uh, or do, doing the dash dash no version switch. Um, it also does analytics. I'm not going to go into great detail what it is now. It's all in the wiki. It's been there for a while, but you've always had the ability to disable analytics as well with a command line switch. And then with the addition of the marketplace, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes, um, that also makes um, out outward reaching requests to a third party in order to pull back some information and so the, the idea is is all these things all these three things can be disabled independently but what I realize is some folks run this tool on internal assessments where they need to be able to be stealth and they want the ability to disable all of these um, and so I can uh, using I added this stealth switch here which will disable all um, all imp implicit, right? All implicit requests that are made by the framework. 
by implicit, I mean things the framework does without you invoking them. So the version check, the analytics reporting, and then uh, reaching out and updating the marketplace index there. Okay, so those things, all those implicit requests will be disabled, and which means that those features won't be enabled as well, and that'll that'll impact your your experience with the marketplace there. Um, but if you pre-install your modules, you'll be good to go, and we'll talk about that. Um, but this just gives you the ability to to be in complete control of of any network activity that Recon NG creates, and so I think that's a desirable feature. So that's been added in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the framework with the um, no analytics, just to prevent some additional traffic there. And we'll go ahead and launch the framework. And so one of the obvious things, obvious things that pops up at first is um, the banners changed a little bit. Um, all of this is pretty much the same, but I've gone ahead and added my own company information to the bottom there since that's been started since this thing got big. Um, uh, and then you'll notice it says no modules are enabled or installed. Now I've already had somebody reach out to me and go, hey, something's wrong. Nothing's loading here. Well. Um, that, this is this is intentional. This is how it's supposed to be. There is nothing except a empty framework to begin with, um, and then I'm going to introduce you to the marketplace, which is where you'll get to pick and choose the modules you want, rather than be forced to have them all functioning on your system, which means all their dependencies, all their API keys, all of that stuff. And then one of the common complaints I used to get with the old version was there'd be a bunch of errors up here for anything that didn't load properly. Well, that's all gone now because those aren't there unless you choose to have them there. And obviously if you choose to have a module there, you're probably going to satisfy those de dependencies and you're going to satisfy the requirement of some sort of credential or key. Um, and so, uh, so that being said, um, that shouldn't be a problem anymore. You won't see that stuff. Okay, but once again, we'll get to the marketplace here in a minute. Uh, verbosity levels have always been there. Um, this, you've got three different verbosity levels within the framework. You've got uh, um, no verbosity at all, which means it just gives you pretty much output and no type of status information or anything. And then you've got a verbosity level of one, which is gives you a little bit more context. That's typically that's the default. That's where I normally operate as well. And then you've got the debugging level verbosity, which is a setting of two, um, and that just gives you all, all possible information that the that the framework can spit out at you with regards to what's happening under the hood and so on and so forth. Database transactions, um, web transactions, all of that stuff. And and I'll talk about this options command here in a minute, but um, this is the, the these are the options here. This is the verbosity option right there, and it gives you a little bit of information. I don't know that I've ever covered that before. I know I've had some folks that were a little confused on what that means, uh, but that's what that is. Um, it allows you to do that. Once again, number one is the default. That's typically the desired level of output that folks want to work with. And then if you're having issues, of course, you can debug. So let's talk about some of the command changes within the framework. If we uh, use our interactive help, and I encourage people to use this interactive help, um, it's awesome. Uh, you get a listing of all the commands. This isn't new. Uh, this was all. This has always been there. But some of the commands have changed. You'll notice these. This uh, dashboard command was not there before. DB command was not there before. Index command, marketplace command, modules command, options command. Uh, script command. So there are definitely some new commands in here. However, most of these um, are a, a consolidation of commands that used to be all together, right? So within the DB command, and we'll do help DB, you can see that you, it asks for delete, insert, query, and schema. Well, if you remember, these were four different commands before, but I've consolidated them under the db command as subcommands because it makes sense, right? Hierarchically, it makes sense to say I'm interacting with the database for all four of these, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a more organized command structure. So that's what I've done there. And so under the db command, you have the ability to delete, insert um, uh, records into any table. Of course, you have the ability to create a custom query there, and then, of course, output, output the schema. Um, so that you can uh, have the information you need to build uh, custom queries and so on and so forth. Uh, you already saw a little bit of it, but the options command has had similar changes. Um, listing the options, which used to be showing the options, setting the options, and unsetting the options are now all subcommands of the options command. So if you do options list or options set or options unset, uh, you'll see uh, that's where you'll get to do those things. And once again, I mean, the help goes beyond just this first tier. If I do options set and I'm not sure what to put there, um, then it's going to tell me invalid option name. Um, and, and that means that I need to give it a name of some sort. 
Um, there is tab completion as well. So if you start typing out verbosity, bam, you've got it there. Um, and then of course it's, you know, I just unset it there. So I'm going to reset it to, uh, so we set up the one. Uh, so you've got you've got some built-in command as well. Uh, there's not a whole lot to show you in, in any of those subcommands. But if I do like a db query and then I don't give it a query, yep, you should see some of the more in-depth help there that says, wait, db query expects some sort of SQL there. So um, so there is help beyond just the first tier as well. All right, so that's db. That's options. Uh, the modules command is new. So let's take a look at that one. And basically, I've consolidated a few more things there. And so the actual loading of a module is under the modules. Uh, reloading of all of the modules in the framework that you've installed is now under there. And then, of course, the ability to, to search all of the modules. Now, these are installed modules. Um, there is a different there. I'll show you the marketplace here in a minute, but the marketplace and modules um, are, are are similar in nature uh, in the kind of information that they're going to give you. But it's important to remember that one of them is remote and one of them is local. So marketplace is going to be everything remote, everything that's out on the remote mar module marketplace, whereas the modules com command is going to be interacting locally. OK, so these are the things that you've installed, whether you've pulled them off of the marketplace or whether you've installed modules locally, like custom modules you've pulled from somebody else's GitHub repo or you developed yourself or something like that. Those are going to show up here. So you have the ability to search those. And I believe the search um, here. Yep, uh, it allows for regular expressions there. So it's a little bit more of a, a little bit more powerful search engine than it used to be. Um, and then, of course, it still has the smart loading feature as well. We don't have anything here. But if I go to the modules load and then I give it um, you know, a word like pwn, um, if there's no modules installed with that name, it's going to say, you know, invalid module name. However, if there are more than one modules installed with the name uh, pwned, then it'll just list those for me. And then I'll have a more, uh, a smaller list of, 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 of items to choose from. And then I can see the, the paths that I'm looking for and I can load them more specifically. Um, otherwise, if there's only one module that this particular provided string matches, then it just loads it. Right, so it's got that smart loading feature that's been there for a long time, but it's still there, and it exists in a couple other places as well that I'll show you uh, here in a few minutes. And that's that's loading. Yeah, so there it is. Um, so that's the modules command. Uh, dashboard. Some of you remember the the old show dashboard command. Basically, I just moved that into its own, um, and I think it's because you know I, I may have the ability to expand this at a later time to do more with the dashboard. As you can see right now, we have no activity in this particular workspace. Obviously, this populates with some tables of data when I do. For those of you that have seen this before, but just wanted to point out that the dashboard command is now a root level command and not a sub command of something else. Okay. Uh, the next one is the script command. So help script. Um, you may remember previously there was the uh, the record command and the resource command. Um, and the record command was to start and stop uh, recording you know, commands that you're putting into the framework. So if you used to be able to hit record start and then type a bunch of commands in the framework, record stop, and then you'd have a resource file. You'd have a script that you could then replay back. Um, and then there was the resource command that you provided that script to, and it would execute it. And it just made sense to me to consolidate the, all of those under one particular um, uh, root level command. And I've done that now. So you have the script command, and underneath it, you have the record, which starts recording. You can give it a file name. It starts recording to that file name. Um, you can check this, your current recording status. You can stop recording. And then, of course, you can execute the script that you recorded all under the script command. So that's a, uh, that was a convenient consolidation as well. OK, so before I move on to the next one, I did add another. I can't show it to you right now because we don't have any modules installed. I'll install one in a minute, and then I'll be able to show it to you. But um, at the module context, everything I've been showing you at this point is at the global context. And you can tell because you're right here, you're in your workspace, right? Your workspace prompt that puts you in the global context. When you load a module, this changes. And you'll see the module name show up over here as well. That means you're in the module context. Um, there are some more commands I've added there. Um, that I want to show you here in just a moment, but I can't right now. Oh, but we will come, we will come back to that. So the old show command, which which was kind of a central point for a lot of things that the framework did previously. This is where you, you know, show dashboard, show options, show modules, show all that stuff. Um, all those all that output's been moved, right? All, you know, modules, list, options, list, so on and so forth. Then now those commands kind of the, that, that particular output 
is where it belongs. The only thing that the only subcommands that are available for the show command are tables in the database. Okay, so now the show command is strictly for just reviewing current data, um, just looking at the data. So you'll notice all of the different options you have here um, for these subcommands are tables within the schema there. And so that's that's kind of the restricted usage for show now. Um, all that extra extraneous stuff has been pushed out to where it belongs under the uh, proper root level command. Okay, um, as, I, as I showed you, some of the subcommands have been, been renamed too. So like if I, you know, this used to say like show options. Well, if I look at the um, the options subcommands, you'll see I don't have options show, I have options list. And so some of those have been renamed, I think under modules. I also have a, a, search, a search, I think was there before. Um, I think this was either use or load. It's now only load, there's no more uh, there's no more use alias for the load command. And so uh, I just encourage you as, you as you go through and you use it or you're updating your content, make sure that anywhere you are referencing uh, subcommands to make sure they're still the same. I think keys was one. Yeah, I think this used to be keys delete. Now it's keys remove. All right, so that's 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 a particular change that has happened. Um, and yeah, just just keep just keep an eye on those things. Okay, so the other uh, the other command in here that you that we mentioned was new um, is this marketplace command. Okay, so this is the uh, large par portion of the new functionality that exists. Um, basically, the whole idea behind uh, behind the marketplace was I wanted to decouple modules from uh, from the framework. Um, for a couple different reasons. One was was maintenance. I wanted to be able to give more than just me um, write privileges to a repository, which would allow allow some you know, allow people to help me update and maintain these things uh, um, without me having to be the final say in everything. Right? Um, I'm still going to maintain that level of control over the core because it's it's a complex piece of code, and to me, it's pretty sensitive. And I think there's places over it where it's fragile, and so I don't want people making pushes to that without my final approval. But um, as far as uh, modules go, I want to be a little bit more uh, free with it, and and so this is going to give me the ability to do that. Uh, the other thing it does is it is it, it reduces. Um, I, I'm per, I was pretty strict about adding a bunch of dependencies to the core, um, and so having it decoupled like this now allows people to write modules that use whatever dependencies they want, and I'll show you the impact of that here in just a little bit. Uh, but I no longer have to have all these extra dependencies in the core of the framework. Um, you can just note which dependencies are required for your particular module, and then anybody that wants to install it can choose whether or not they want those dependencies. And so it really gives the module developers a lot more freedom. Um, and then turns around and allows me to incorporate a lot more modules, because that was one thing that was keeping me from implementing a lot of modules, was just people using all these crazy dependencies and complex code and all these, uh, they were, it was neat stuff they were doing, but it wasn't stuff I wanted to bring into the core. Now that that's decoupled, it's not an issue anymore. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to having this particular marketplace. Now, how does the marketplace work? Well, let me show you. Um, for those of you that don't know, when you start Recon NG, it creates this particular folder in your in your home directory here. So you just have dot recon ng. And now underneath dot recon ng, you've got some things. You've got the keys database, which houses all of your API keys, which um, as a side note, if you're ever looking, I've had people ask me, you know, how do I get my keys from my old recon ng to this other system because I've changed computers, so on and so forth just take that file and move it. It um, It is completely separate from your workspaces. It is a root level recon ng file. Just move your keys database to the new system. The In, in the same place in the new system, recon ng will pick it up um, and will uh, and will and you'll have all your keys that you had from the previous system there. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, you'll have the modules directory. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, modules.yaml and then you have all of your workspaces so under your workspaces you have your individual workspaces but modules where I want to key in when you install modules via the work uh, via the marketplace they'll show up in there as you can see it's empty right in fact I'll go in there just to kind of make it look a little better you can see it's an empty it's an empty directory and though that's where they'll be installed in there 
okay and now I'm gonna come back here and show you after we install one where they populate but this is gonna actually start to build a directory tree in there and then when you remove a module it goes in there and it removes it and then as a part of the removal process if it finds any empty directories it removes those as well so you could potentially remove all modules then remove all modules and this directory will be completely empty again it doesn't leave any artifacts behind and so it's it's kind of nice in that regard but this is where we install them and I'm gonna come back and show you why that means something here in just a few moments okay so let's go and let's look at at the marketplace so let's do a help marketplace you can see here I've got a couple of options I got the info install refresh remove and search so uh, the refresh command basically when, when re, you, you saw the stealth option which disables the marketplace and, and the reason why it does that is because when you start up recon and G the one of the first things it does it makes that you know version check and then um, it reaches out to the marketplace and it pulls back an index file that's hosted there and that index file is cached locally on your system so that you can very very quickly look at all the available modules that are there well, if you leave Recon NG open for long periods of time, then potentially, you know, the 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 modules that you know we're working with and updating and adding to the marketplace could change. And so you could come in here, do a marketplace refresh, and it refreshes your local index of the marketplace. Um, now, that. Um, that happens automatically when you start Recon G. So if you're constantly in and out of the tool, you don't leave it open when you're not using it, then you're fine. You're going to marketplace is going to refresh every time. You'll be good to go. Um, but that's what that particular thing is for. And then install, installing and removing, I'll show you those in a moment. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, info I'll show you in a moment. And then search. Now search is kind of where you're going to start things. Um, so let's see here. Marketplace search. Blah, blah, blah. Just put, put in some garbage there. You'll see, hey, it searched. Module's not found. But really what I was trying to get to is this help here. So basically, marketplace search regular expression. So you can give it a regular expression here, and then it'll list all of the uh, all of the modules that match that regular expression. So obviously, everything is a is a everything has something in it. So regular expression for dot, and I believe the the brackets mean it's also optional. So if you just do a marketplace search and then you give it nothing, it'll list all of the modules in the marketplace. So let's look at the information that's available here. You have the path, which is essentially the unique name um, and where it's going to install within the modules directory for that particular module. You have the version the version of the module. I mean, all of these, unless they were explicitly versioned previously, uh, we set them all to 1.0 when we release the marketplace. Uh, whether or not it is installed and this is actually this status goes farther than that it'll say not installed installed disabled um, and I'll explain what disabled means or or uh, out of date so it also tell you when it's out of date which is kind of nice and then there's the updated field which tells you the last time that that particular module is updated now you know what's the difference between version and updated right I mean they're both gonna change at the same time all the time Yes, yes, they will. Um, the reason why I put the updated thing in there is it's kind of nice to be able to to see, you know, if, if you haven't used Recon NG for a month or two, you can quickly, rather than trying to remember which version it was on last time you you, you you listed the marketplace, you could just look at the data it was updated and say, oh, that was done three weeks ago. I haven't used the tool for two months, so something's changed there. I need to, uh, and I want to go and, and look at that one a little closer to see if it's added a feature I may be interested in or so on and so forth. Then there's this DK column and K column. Um, I abbreviated those just to save us some space on the table here. But basically, D means it has de its dependencies, and K means that it requires a key. And then notice it says C info for details. Well, that info should look familiar. That was one of the other subcommands. Okay. Um, and so, if you found a module that you'd want to install, say something like, um, well, I guess one of these Pwned Hub ones has both of these. So, say we want to we want to look at some information about this here. Um, uh, this also has the smart loading feature, so I'm going to show you this. If we do like a marketplace search, okay, so as you can see there, um, I did a marketplace search for Pwn list, and the smart search kicked in, or the, yeah, smart search kicked in and said, hey, look, I've got, you know, six different modules that work there. Um, that will also apply to info, okay? So if I want to see, you know, info, uh, you know, if I was looking for info on, on Pwn list account creds and you know, I just ignored the rest of these and said, well, I'll just use the smart feature. Ah, it's going to show me info for all of them. Um, and then, of course, you can you can drill down and, and just do the one that you want as well. So if we want to be a little bit more specific in our smart load, that should be the only module that matches. 
So we go info, phone list, and then we see the info on that one there. And of course, it's an ASCII table, so it looks a little bit ugly here. But there you see um, required keys. Ah, there's the required keys for that. Dependencies, there's the required dependencies. And now you know which keys you need to go grab beforehand. And you also know which dependencies you need to install before that particular module will work. Okay, now if you install one of these and then you go to run it, that's where you're going to start to see some of those errors. If you've not satisfied this or you've not satisfied this, it's going to say, hey, look, you know, I don't see a key for a, you know, a particular, uh, you know, in fact, I'm going to I think I'm going to show you one of these here in just a moment. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and install a module that I know requires it. Let's take a look. Make sure. Oh, it doesn't say it requires it. Um, that's, I think, because we're still working on that one. Let me try this one. So we want to start uh, install a, a module. We go to Marketplace, Install, and I'm going to use the Smart Discovery feature, and it installs it there. So now if I do a modules list, or actually, sorry, search, You'll see, ah, there's, remember, remember, this is the local marketplace commands for remote, um, modules commands for local. Here you can see I have um, it installed there. And um, it should, it already reloads. Sorry, it's not a valid command anymore. Um, I'm getting used to my own command structure. Um, it loads just fine, so that's obviously not, that's obviously one that looks like it's going to function properly. Um, let's go and uh, look at something else that requires keys here so I've got keys for all these though so I don't know if I'm not, I don't know if I'm be able to show you that particular error um, I, I could probably get all the dependencies too for that matter um, Yep, I do. So, um, but regardless, you know, I've got all the dependencies and all the keys installed for all of these because I've been developing on those. But if you don't, the framework will handle that gracefully. So when you go to install a module, and if we can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and show you the marketplace, you can see that the status for them is some of these has switched to installed. Okay. Now, if you don't have a dependency in place that's required then the module will still install, but it'll say it's disabled here, and it won't allow you to invoke it until that dependency exists. Um, now, as far as the dependencies go, it's on, it's up to you, it's up to the user to actually install those dependencies on their own. So they have to use the info command to look and see what dependency is required, and then go install it. And then if you go back to the wiki, I've got some guidance there about you know how to go about doing that command by command, and um, we're recommending the uses of, of a virtual environment for EconNG so that you can add and remove modules without impacting uh, the global install of your Python. Um, Python. So, um, you know, that's there are some good ways to do some housekeeping there, but the framework is going to let you know whether or not you've got that install, or whether you've got the right dependency there, and it'll tell you, it'll disable it if it's not there. Now, if you have all the dependencies in place and you just don't have the, nest, the requisite key, it's still going to install correctly and it's going to stay installed because, as far as the module is concerned, it's in functional condition at that point in time. Um, what's going to happen though is when you try to load the module. Um, the, the framework will look inside of your keys to say, hey, do, do they have the keys um, in, uh, set that are required for this particular module? And if you don't, it'll say, hey, look, you don't have this key set. Chances are it's not going to work on runtime. And if you actually go to run the particular module, because it's still going to let you run, um, if you go to run that particular module, it's, it's going to... Um, it's obviously going to fail. It's going to, you're going to get some sort of unauthentic, unauthorized or unauthenticated error from whatever service you're trying to access there. So, so I've broken that out, tried to give you some context as to what to do there, um, how to go about you know, looking into these particular modules, whether or not you want to install them, and what information is needed. Okay. Now, what if you want to use custom modules? Like, how would you go about doing that? If you wanted to use custom modules, that's where we go back to the directory structure. Um, as I told you, this is going to be the directory that uh, this is going to be the directory here. Your home folder slash dot recon.g slash modules where modules are going to be installed. So if I do a listing here, you'll see that I have my um, 
my my stuff listed in there, right? I mean, you can see I have all there. All my modules are actually sitting in this particular. Well, all you have to do is within this particular folder is create another um, is create another folder that's just not named one of the root folders. So you know, one of the root folders in the directory you've seen at recon, um, discovery, exploitation, so on and so forth. So you could create something like a custom, and I'm gonna just pull up a previous command here where I did this. Right, where I'm going to make a, I'm just making a symbolic link in this particular folder called custom, which points to some folder where I have a bunch of custom modules. And so when I do that, now within here, not only do I have my recon folder, but also I have my custom folder, which is here pointing out to others, uh, pointing out to another folder elsewhere on the system, but it could be just a folder that's sitting right here. And now within the framework, if I do a modules reload, You'll see it reload, and of course I got some errors on these because whatever these custom modules are have not been updated or anything. They've been there for a long time. Um, just ignore the errors. Um, we'll talk about errors again here in just a moment, but if I go to modules um, search and just kind of show you, here you see uh, there's all my custom modules, the actual ones that loaded. All right, so I have two of them that successfully loaded from the custom folder, two of them that failed, and I got errors here. Um, and then I actually have, um, and these actually are there, they're just disabled. And then I have those that I've actually installed from the marketplace itself. If you go and you install, uninstall everything from the marketplace, so if I go marketplace, um, sorry, not uninstall, remove all, which is going to remove everything from the uh, marketplace. You see it removed only the two that I installed from the marketplace and it reloaded the modules so that we've got a, a, a current module uh, context for the framework and you see these errors which is kind of hinting to what I was getting ready to, to show you now the only thing that got removed were the things that were installed by the marketplace so all your custom stuff is still there and is still intact okay so I want to make that uh, make that so you can so yeah it's really nice really easy way really easy to have your custom modules exist right next to your installed modules and everything just works as you would expect it to so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this symbolic link here and I'm back to no modules. So back to the framework. So that's the marketplace. Um, and I think that's everything that I wanted to cover there. Now, as far as error handling goes, the last thing I want to talk about before I end the video is I have improved error handling. So I'm going to install a couple of modules that currently I, that I know currently have some errors that'll help me uh, um, help me invoke this. So let's do marketplace install trans. Transparency. This is the certificate transparency module. Okay, it did. Marketplace install. Um, who is minor? And there may be more than one of those. Oh no, good. There's just one. Okay, cool. So, all right. So we've got a couple of different modules here that I want to load and show you. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the certificate transparency one first. So module load and once again you notice hey wait a second that doesn't look like a valid path remember smart loading use it everywhere smart loading is anytime you're loading a module installing a module removing a module that smart loading feature is really really nice i encourage you um, to use that i also encourage you to use tab completion because it just makes things so much easier i watch videos of people that are literally typing out every letter having to backspace because they mistype things just use tab and complete it makes life so much easier it exists throughout the entire framework so now um, before i show you how i'm doing some improved error handling here i do want to go back and show you what the op what the options look like for the module context now a lot of commands are shared between both the global context on the mod and the module context um, dashboard db um, all those look pretty similar keys modules options um, right so a lot of the script most of these look the same there's a lot of overlap however there are some new ones such as gaptions and so what gaptions does is is it will um, it will list the current global options right you can't modify these yet um, from from the from the module context but you can at least see what you have those configured as and so that's kind of that's kind of a nice feature and I may expand this as we move forward um, the info command which I think used to be under show info has now been pushed to the root this actually will show you detailed information about the module so you have all the metadata right you have the 
um, author and the version and a, a description and then you have um, uh, the list of the options and then this is uh, you know some some notes about what this source option can be and then any comments left by the developer so this is a super helpful um, this is a super helpful uh, command for understanding what that module does and this is what we're going to be testing here in just a moment uh, there's a little warning there from the developer so um, this is actually one of the reasons why I incorporated some of the better error handling but getting back to what I, getting back to these commands um, Info input gives you uh, the ability to very quickly see what exactly you've got, what exactly you have going into the module. And so, up here when we listed options, there's the source command. And then by default, right now we don't have it working on anything. So, um, because we, there's nothing in the database, see the default option is this query here, which is preset by the developer. Um, we're going to go ahead and use this particular option here and define a specific source so that this module will actually work because otherwise if we try to run it it's going to tell us hey source contains no input um, so let's go ahead and do that so options set source yahoo.com because it's a big one and now if we do info you can see it's yahoo.com so now we have a source set uh, so now I can show you what inputs does input will list out you know what the input's going to be because sometimes you're going to be using some of these more complex whether it be a path to a file or whether it be an actual custom query you use some more complex sources of input for a particular module when you do that you may want you know, rather than run the module and see what it's actually processing you can run this command to see what um, what the framework's going to do with what you got, give it here and and what it's actually going to pass to the module to to transform um, into new data. So uh, so it's just a good a good a good module to check on yourself uh, before you actually end up running the module. So there's that. It's inputs. What other things have changed? And that's it. Other than just I think run was always there. Um, so those are the new ones at the module context. So then once again, this is that second context. There's the global context and the module context. There's a lot of overlap, but there's also some different commands at each one of those. Notice the marketplace command doesn't exist here. Um, because the marketplace is only meant to be used from the global context. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to this more graceful error handling stuff that I wanted to talk about. Um, if I run this here, um, this is going to take a while. And I think my default is 10 seconds, and Yahoo should take longer than that with this module. And it should fail out. Okay. So if it fails out, um, I'm, I'm, capture, I'm capturing a couple of different exceptional conditions in, in the code now. Before I wasn't, and you would just get this ugly thing right here. And you'd be like, oh, what's that? And how do I deal with it? Oh, I'm going to have to mo modify the module and make sure I give the requests you know, you know, more time or whatever. A lot of people don't realize that there's a global there's a global option for timeout for this exact reason. So if I list the global options, you'll, um, you'll see right here and it's default to 10 seconds. Well, if you're using a module that's taking too long, rather than just give you this ugly error that doesn't really give you much hints, I'm actually gonna give you a, a new custom error specifically for this exception type that says, hey look, a request took too long to complete. If the issue persists, increase the global timeout option. So now you've got a little bit more help with regards to anything that, ha anything that uh, is impacted by the globally set timeout. Okay, um, the next one is just crashes in general. Right, and I think I've got a module here. Yeah, the who is minor is broken, so let's load it up. Okay, and if I just try to run this, and so now if if you do run into an an error, like you're not left without without some sort of guidance here. Um, and so basically it says, hey, something's broken, which means I have detected, you know, within the framework, I have actually detected an exception that made its way all the way out of the module to back to the framework. And I've captured that and said, okay, something's definitely wrong here. Um, see this particular place of the wiki um, uh, for troubleshooting and then ultimately issue reporting if there's a problem. And so on the wiki I have, and we'll, and we'll continue to, to add some troubleshooting tips for both the framework and modules. Um, and then ultimately, if, if the troubleshooting tips don't help, um, some proper guidance on how to actually uh, file an issue with us for that particular module to be fixed. So as far as, uh, as, far as error handling goes, things have been improved a little bit there. Okay, um, and so that pretty much uh, that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, I'll leave you with this beautiful banner here, right here. But I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and and stop the video for now. But I would um, 
I just want to you know, mention again, if you're maintaining course material um, or something along those lines or, or updating a book or something like that, these are big changes and, and, and these are essentially breaking changes for anybody that's written previous scripts or have learned uh, learned how to use this tool through one of your training courses. So I would encourage you, please, um, uh, please update your stuff, um, get the word out. And if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to to hit me up, and uh, and I can go into more in depth on a particular topic or or answer any specific questions that you have. Um, but otherwise, you know, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, I hope it helps. And uh, go forth and do good recon.